Hi and welcome again to Tech Bike Parts. I hope that little intro has whetted your appetite a little bit. Um, we've actually found quite a bit of power out of the new Triumph um, 900 motors. Uh, what has been bugging us about these since they came out was Triumph's produced a 900cc motor with probably less power than what a modern 650 has. Now they come up with various reasons for this, basically saying that it was a high torque motor and that's what people wanted. But we looked at the design of it and what was really frustrating us was all the normal tuning methods we were using on the motor weren't producing the results we were expecting to see. Things like slip-on cans, air filters, things like that where you would normally see a significant improvement nothing was really happening. In a lot of cases power was actually going down. Now if you look on YouTube there's been various videos of people have posted doing dyno runs on these bikes and nobody's managed to get any more power out of them. So this really whetted our appetite and we thought we're going to have to look get it at the bottom of this. So we did various things on the bike. Uh, first of all we thought it was like most modern bikes that it was the problem was in the ECU and the tune. So we 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 looked at doing retunes, which you can't do because Triumph don't release any tunes for them now. They did at first do a tune for the Vance and Heinz exhaust system. Uh, we installed that and installed the, the, the Vance and Heinz system. Um, it costs about 1500 quid for the, the, the system and the, and the download, and it produces about one brake horsepower. So not very good value for money, 1500 pound for one brake horsepower. And don't take our word for it, there is other people have done dyno runs and, and posted them on YouTube. So we thought next, like I say, it was the, the ECU, so we actually built a whole different system, fuel injection system, and put it on. And again, the motor just wouldn't breathe at higher revs. So we thought it's, it's got to be either inlet or something inside the motor. So we did the easy thing first, we looked at the inlet. Now it does have quite a strangled inlet on this motor, the air box is very restrictive and it does have just a single throttle body on the 900, a single 38mm um, throttle body, whereas the, the 1200 has two 44 throttle bodies on. So it's, there's quite a significant difference between the 900 and 1200 there. I thought, yeah, we're onto it here. So we designed and built a larger throttle body, put it on, and we, we did get a little bit more power up to a certain rev and then it just dropped off again. I thought well the hell with this we're gonna to have to delve into the motor so we took the top end of the motor apart to have a look to see what the problem was and when we got the degree wheel on the motor we discovered what the problem is. Triumph have fitted a restrictor camshaft to this motor. It's, it almost gives it the, the power characteristics of a diesel car engine. The power drops off dramatically after about three to four thousand revs. Well it doesn't drop off but it strangles. So we decided we're going to have to design a new camshaft for this motor. So for the past six months we've been working on cam designs to get the, the, the motor just right. What we didn't want to do was run what most people do is put a standard high performance cam into the motor because that would spoil the bottom end characteristics. So we had a very tight design brief on what we wanted to do to this motor. We wanted the motor to still comply to Euro 4 emissions. We wanted all the bottom end power as it was at the moment. No reduction in the bottom end power, but only increase in top end and bottom end power. Um, and we didn't want to affect the fuel economy. So pretty tight design brief and it's a bit of a holy grail for camshaft designers to be able to get more top end power without losing bottom end power but we felt that the design of the motor was good enough to do that from Triumph and that they had actually restricted the motor with, with the cam that they put in. Anyway six months down the line uh, we've done extensive testing and we're going to show you in a moment how that testing went, came about uh, with dyno charts and on dyno runs. Now the reason we've discovered why Triumph have done this, well this haven't is discovered, we've sort of worked out why Triumph have put the, this low power motor into this bike is basically a marketing ploy. Um, the true potential of this engine is too close to the 1200 motor and there would be no incentive for people to buy a T120 over a T100 for instance because there would be no uh, power advantage 
no performance advantage when you take into account the extra weight of the 1200 bike. Also things like the Triumph now do an A2 kit for the, the for learner legal uh, uh, power restriction on um, A2 license holders. Now in the past they've had to fit a mechanical restrictor to the bike that's restricted the throttle and that isn't very good for, for riding uh, characteristics. So what they've done is that they've used an ECU based power restriction. So really all they need to do is plug the computer in and it restricts the bike. And also the bike can be checked at any time by, by downloading the information in the ECU to check and verify that it is A2 compliant. Now to do that, they've had to put this restrictor cam in because you couldn't restrict it purely on the ECU with just the, 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 that tune that the engine would be too strong at the top end. So they've had to do that to keep the bottom end power and keep it A2 compliant. So anyway, we've spent a long time getting this camshaft right and to do a back-to-back -back testing to prove that it works, we, we went to a local company called uh, Dragon Performance Bikes down in Durham. The reason we use them is because they've got two dynos and they've both recently been overhauled and calibrated so they were, they, were, they were running very accurately. So as a benchmark, we decided to run the Street Scrambler, which is, it's got the stock camshaft in. Now this bike is all stock apart from a DCAT. It has a DCAT on it. Now a DCAT does give you a few brake horsepower over the stock. Triumph caught these at the crankshaft 54 brake horsepower. Now you normally lose about eight brake horsepower by the time the power gets to the, the rear wheels. So you would normally expect about 49 brake horsepower at the rear wheel on one of these. Now, if you want to check, you can verify on YouTube. There's various street twins and street scramblers being run up, not owned by us, uh, all over the world. And they all run between 48 and 50 brake horsepower at the rear wheel, depending on the dyno that they run on. So as a benchmark on the same dyno, we run this one up. And you can see the first dyno run, which will be on the screen now. Um, the interesting point is the, the bottom line on the dyno run, which is, is your torque. Now you'll see your torque peak is at about 3,500 RPM, and then all it does is fall away from there. The top line on the graph is your brake horsepower, and as you can see the peak brake horsepower on this is 52.7, which is a little bit up on stock, like I say you'd normally expect about 49 at the rear wheel. And this is exactly what we would expect with just a DCAT on. Uh, it's allowing the engine to breathe a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, the, the power starts to tail off before it actually gets to the, the, the peak revs. It's almost like a, a, an inbuilt rev limiter. It doesn't need the electronic li limiter. And there's no in incentive to rev this bike out. Um, now, the next run that we do, which you'll see the, 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 video, the, the, the sheet on now is the first run we've done with a bike with a camshaft in. Now again this bike is totally stock apart from a DCAT which is the same spec as this and the camshaft. Now the cam as you can see is the only, because it's the only difference it gives a really good back-to-back -back comparison. Now as you can see on the top line it is drastically different to the the, the, the power line on the, 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 the stock cam. We're now up to 63 brake horsepower and 59.1 pounds foot. But again, if you also, that's not just the only thing. If you look at the graph, it goes up at almost 45 degrees all the way up to the red line and it only stops when it hits the rev limiter. It's starting to flatten out as it's getting to the rev limiter. So this is an almost perfect power curve. Your bottom line, your torque, the torque peak has moved up now, it's moved up to about 4,000, but it gives the same spread, same torque at, at lower revs, but you've actually got a bigger spread, and it doesn't drop off as much. It doesn't really drop out a peak torque until it hits about 5,000 RPM, and then it just tails away gradually till it hits the red line. So you've got more mid-range torque and a lot more brake horsepower. Now what you find with this is now you, you're, you're, revving, uh, you're using the full revs of the, the bike, and when you're sitting in the torque sweet spot, when you open the throttle, 
it doesn't drop out of the torque, it, it carries on and it keeps on accelerating right up to the red line. Now this has got the standard, this run had, was run with the standard silencers on. Now what was infuriating us before is when we put uh, straight through silencers on, we weren't seeing any significant increase in power like we would expect. So we specifically ran it with the first run with the stock silencers on. Next run we put our, our straight through um, slip-ons on. So that's dyno run three. And we've done a comparison dyno run with t two and three. And you can see all the way up there's a, a big comparison, a big uh, differential between the, the standard can in the aftermarket can in torque and brake horsepower. Peak horsepower has now gone up from 63 brake horsepower to 65.8 and torque has gone up to uh, 61 pounds foot. So not a huge increase in torque but it, it's a useful increase. It's brake horsepower that's gone up quite a bit. Now that's what we would normally expect to find with, it, with a slip-on can. Now all these runs have been done with the stock air box with the snorkel and filter on, all a standard. You know, we thought this was now going to be the restricting factor on the motor. So the next run we did with just the throttle body only with no um, air box connected at all just to show how much restriction the air box is, is running. So that was run number four. So we've got a comparison chart now between three and four and again you can see quite a jump in brake horsepower and torque. Now what you do find is actually you lose a little bit of torque at bottom end because you have such a large um, airflow in the engine which is, is what you would normally expect. But it doesn't lose an awful lot but you've, you're back up to normal torque at about 4000 rpm again and then it just keeps on climbing and your power now goes up significantly top end up to 70.6 brake horsepower and 62.3 pounds foot. Now to put this in comparison your rear wheel brake horsepower of a Triumph T120 1200 is about the same. Torque is slightly higher but your brake horsepower is about the same. Triumph on the T120 cool. So our final sheet shows the comparison between the stock bike with the decat on and the bike with all the improvements done to it, the, the airbox uh, bypassed, the straight throughs on X-pipe and cam and we are running 70.6 uh, brake horsepower and 62.3 pounds foot at the rear wheel and the stock bike was running 52.7 uh, and 55 pounds foot. Now that doesn't tell the true story, you need to look at the graph to get the, the better idea. Now at the red line at 7000 RPM this is where you'll see the huge difference. The stock motor is producing, it actually drops away and is producing about 46 horsepower whereas the modified motor is actually at its power peak and producing 70.6. So you've got a 30 brake horsepower difference at, R, at maximum RPM. Now that is, I do, you have to agree that is a huge amount of, of power difference and it's certainly noticeable when you ride the bike. Now the, to put that into context, the, the Triumph quote for the, the T120 1200 motor, 79 brake horsepower at the rear wheel and 77.4 pounds foot, sorry, at the crank these, the, these are. Now you need to take about 8 to 10 percent off those. So when you look at that and look at this, this, this bike is now almost running 1200 Triumph power, near as damn it. It's only at the mid-range where it's very slightly lower on torque. Now in the real world you won't run the airbox off completely. What we normally do is remove the snorkel to allow the, the flow in the airbox a bit better and put a high flow filter in. So you in the real world situation you'll probably get about 68 brake horsepower unless you want to take the airbox off completely and run a K&N then you, you'll get closer to 70 but it's a bit of a difficult job on these because so many components hung on the airbox it's, and it's also quite loud without the airbox air on but that's 
to get that extra two brake horsepower you may not feel you need to do that so really to sum up as the, the tuner said when we ran up in the dyno it is very rare to get this sort of performance out of a camshaft only uh, base tuning system without losing the bottom end which points us to the direction that this is the cam that try and design for this motor from the onset and the, the change that they put a restrictor cam in. Now the company we're working with to make the cam is one of Britain's oldest, well England's oldest uh, established camshaft makers uh, very well respected and they've actually worked with Triumph quite a bit in the past so this has obviously helped us getting into the, the, the mindset of how this camshaft was designed so effectively we've used Triumph's design criteria from the past to redesign this so what you haven't got, what you've not got to think of this as a performance camshaft this is more like a stage one or even a stock camshaft it is designed to give you a good spread of power right across the range and yes the power increases sound significant but bear in mind that Yamaha's 700cc twin which is 200cc smaller than this actually produces about those figures that we're getting now so it's not like we're putting huge amounts of stresses on the motor there is more power to come if you wanted but not cheaply to get more power out of this motor now your biggest restricting factor are the valve sizes you would have to put larger particularly inlet valves on and you would have to run twin throttle bodies it's the inlet side now that restricts the breathing of the motor now an interesting fact is that we haven't used a power commander we haven't used any other tuning devices on this motor this this motor is running the stock ECU to get that power again this points to the fact that the ECU and the motor were built with this in mind and restricted at a later date the, the, the bottom end of the engine will take this power no problem whatsoever basically most of the components on this engine are the same as what they use in the 1200R it's just sleeved down really the, the engine is basically the same the biggest difference between this and the, and the 1200 Thruxton is all in the top end the Thruxton has bigger valves, different camshaft uh, obviously a higher compression and a bigger bow so all those factors take you up to 90 odd horsepower and that shows you what you would need to do to this motor to get up to those figures no doubt somebody somewhere one time will get a hundred brake horsepower at this engine which I'm sure it's it's capable of easily doing but it won't be cheap you'd have to run a different head different throttle bodies oh, yes the list goes on and on and on it, it it's not really economically viable to do that so I think it's a good compromise the amount of power and performance we've got out of it and it's not just about power this bike rides much nicer now than it was it came from the factory it hasn't got the the, the this nasty drop off in power one of the downside is it is significantly faster now and the next upgrade is going to be on the front brake the standard two pot caliper it really isn't man enough for the, the sort of speeds the spike will do now but that's a, easy, a thing that's easily upgraded we can we can soon drop a six pot caliper on there and that'll, that'll cure that problem as well now the cams we're going to make a, a small um, uh, production run uh, at first to, to test the market basically to see what the demand is uh, these are being made from billet steel uh, and nitrated because it's it's not worth it first if we're not going to make a huge production run making cast cams like the originals so they're much higher quality because they're, they're all individually machined and ground but obviously they're, they're a little bit more expensive than, than a than a cast cam uh, we're expecting around about 250 pounds for a cam which is not out the way for a performance cam um, and we're not charging a lot on the top really just want to get them out there and if they are uh, significantly taken up by by the, the the industry we will start to produce a, a cast cam and we'll we'll get the price down even more now the, what, what the other point with the um, reliability of the engine on these is what we found when we chewed the old triumph motors was that the clutch wasn't up to the job now again this indicates that the, the fact that this engine was designed to take this power is that the clutch does not feel any stress whatsoever at these, these power outputs and normally on, on the old clutch we had to put heavier springs and, more, and better plates in once, once you even start to tune in them mildly so this is another good indication that this, this, this motor will take this power and it's all on the stock ECU now we, we have been running the, the Vance and Hines map the Triumph were fitting the bikes uh, with this 
uh, Von Sennheim's silencer, which is slightly richer at the bottom end than the stock map. Now, apparently Triumph have stopped supplying this map. Now, this is a, a big political thing that I'm not going to get into at the moment, but um, we can run this with a stock map with a fueling device on. Um, and I'm going to do another video all about ECU remapping, tuning, power command. There's all your options there because I get lots and lots of phone calls and emails about it. And literally half my day is spent up answering those at the moment. So I'm going to do a very basic guide to what you can and can't do, what you need to spend money on and what you don't need to waste your money on. Um, that's probably going to be the next video in the series. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and I'll show you some really cheap ways that you can get a lot more performance out of your bike um, and to, you know, to, to keep the bike running really well without spending a fortune. I quite understand that if quite a few people might be a bit apprehensive about fitting a, delving into their motor and fitting a new camshaft, but it is really quite straightforward to do. Um, it, I'm going to do a separate video on, on how it's installed. Um, and we'll, we'll install a one on this bike here because this one's still got the stock cam in. So we'll show how it's done. Basically, in a nutshell, you, this, this little cover here has to come off the top of the motor. So you need to take the tank and a few other little bits and pieces off here. Take this cover off, held on with four screws, and you need to remove this side cover. Obviously, you need to drain the oil to do that. Triumph said, says you, you need three special tools to do the job. Uh, I can show you how to do it without any of them. Um, just with bits and bobs you've got lying around the workshop. The only special tool you need is a, is a low rated torque wrench for tightening the cam carriers back up again. Um, but it's all fairly straightforward. It's about a two hour job in total. It can be easily done by most home mechanics. If you've ever done the tappets on your, your engine before, your tappet clearances, you should be able to do this no problem. So I think that's about it in a nutshell. If, if you're interested in one of these cams, Drop me a line and we'll put you on the, on the, on the list of, of people who have reserved one. Um, they should be available in January 2018. And uh, like I say, we're going to do a video showing the installation in January on this bike here. We're also going to do, so that'll be a separate video. And we're going to do a separate video about ECU tuning on this bike and all these bikes. If you, you fit in different bits and pieces to them and also how to make them ride nicer with increasing the fuel in at the bottom end. Okay, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.